Hi, everyone. This is the second video on algorithms analysis. And in this video, we're going to be talking about asymptotic notation. Now, asymptotic notation uh, is the formal method of describing the way that our uh, resource consumption grows uh, for our algorithm. OK, so we use this notational method to describe resource consumption growth. Now, this particular, so asymptotic notation is actually not just for CS, but CS certainly uses it for descriptions uh, of the bounds, okay, uh, of our resource consumption growth. So uh, there are basically four notations that we look at. Uh, big O notation, okay, which is describes an upper bound. Uh, omega notation, which describes a lower bound. Theta notation, which is about an exact bound, and little o notation, which is an upper bound that is never going to be equal. Okay, so uh, those are the four notations that we generally consider. Now, uh, for now, one of the things that we have to be a little bit careful of is not to mix up the bounds with worst, best, and average case. Okay, so big O notation is not the same as worst case. Big O notation describes an upper bound, which is not worst case, OK? And this is um, something that is probably uh, maybe easy to mix up, but something that I wanted to note right off the bat so that you don't mix the two up, OK? Big O notation does not mean worst case. Little O, no uh, omega notation, sorry. Omega notation does not mean best case. They are not the same thing. Big O notation is about an upper bound. and uh, omega notation as well a lower bound. You can have a uh, you can have you can do an upper bound. Uh, you can talk about an upper bound of the worst case and a lower bound of the worst case. So it's it's not about uh, best worst average. So don't don't get that mixed up. Most of the time when we talk about big O notation, like when we talk about this, when we apply to our, our analysis, even though we talk about big O notation, what we're really looking at is actually theta notation. But in order to prove theta, you have to prove both big O and omega. So like this, so we don't usually do it. OK, uh, but uh, let's take a look at what big O notation is and then how do we apply it. OK, so this is the most common of the notations that we use. Uh, so what does this actually mean? So let's start with a formal definition. T at n is big O of f at n if and only if there uh, are two constants, c and n naught, such that t at n is less than or equal to c times f at n for all n greater than or equal to n naught. Now, uh, when you read this, this is, seems like that's just a whole bunch of symbols. What on earth does this all mean? OK, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to break down this exact expression and go over sort of like all the pieces and how do we how does this come into play okay so i'm going to start by sort of breaking the uh, expression into first of all two pieces the first piece is t at n is big o of f at n okay now what this basically says is this this is what we're trying to uh prove this is what we're trying to make it this is the statement we're trying to make OK, in order for you to be able to make a statement like this, that T at N is big O of F at N, this, the second half of this must be true. So if you want to say this, you can only do that if this is true. That's, that's what this whole thing says, OK? So this is what I want to say. In order for me to say it, I have to know that this second half of it is true. Now, let's further break it, this uh, particular part up into its little pieces. So first of all, what, what do any of these symbols mean? OK, so let's start with the first one, n. What on earth is n? Now, n, it, what it does is it refers to the size of the data, the amount of data that we're working with. So n is data size. That's all it is. How many pieces of data are we looking at? OK. Then we have t at n, OK? So t at n is a mathematical function. Now, we don't have to call it t, by the way. We could, when we're doing analysis, you can call it p, you can call it s, you can call it f, you can call it g, you can call it whatever you want. You just basically have some sort of function. So t here is the name of our function. So t is the function name, 
is a mathematical function. And this T at N describes our resource consumption. It's, uh, it's something that we put together and we count and we figure out an expression that describes how much resource we will consume as N gets bigger and bigger. So as N gets bigger, how many more operator, how many operations will we do? So what this is, is basically a function. Now, usually, so I use T because T for time, but you could, you don't have to use T, okay? Just to be clear, you can use uh, whatever letter you want. It's simply a function that measures resource consumption. And what we do when we do analysis is we start by figuring out what this function is. Okay, we figure out a mathematical expression that will describe our resource consumption. Now we're going to do an example of this later to I will show you how to put together a T at N, but that's what this is. This is describing resource consumption. Okay. Now, once we have this, so this function is describing how much resource we're using. So the next bit is big O. So this part, big O, uh, this basically just says which uh, of the asymptotic notation we're using. To what, what bound are we trying to describe? So big O here, this means upper bound. Okay, uh, so that's that's the big O. That's big O notation. Now, if we use theta notation, omega notation, then they would be ex uh, theta would be exact bound, uh, and omega would be a lower bound. But here we're talking about upper bound. Okay. Now, inside the big O bracket, uh, you have f at n, okay? Now, f at n is basically a curve, okay? So we don't actually ever use f at n. We use the, na the, the curve that we're trying to say that, this, that describes our upper bound. So what are these curves? Well, these curves are basically the ones that you used uh, that we talked about in the previous video. So let me show you. So remember these, so this is the curve. So what we put inside, what f at n is, is going to be either, it's this part here. This is, so uh, f at, uh, so big O of one describes this line right here. Uh, log n, okay, big O of log n describes this curve. Big O of uh, n describes this straight line. Big O of n log n is this curve. So all of these, uh, all of these curves is what is described by f at n. Okay, so whatever f at n is, this is this is what describes it. Okay. So what we're doing here is we're saying that one of those curves describes the upper bound of t at n. Okay, that's what this. That's what this part says, okay? So in order, so what we're saying is that, uh, for example, if I made the statement T at N is big O of N, for example, what we're trying, what we're saying, uh, what this describes uh, is that uh, the, in order for me to say that the N curve, okay, the, the, that's the straight line, the diagonal straight line. Uh, the N curve describes the upper bound of T at N. So if I can make the statement, I'm saying that the T at N, the straight line describes this upper bound. That's what that says. Okay. Now, in order for me to prove that this is true, in order for me to make this statement, this next bit has to be true. Okay. So next thing, let's talk about this one. If IFF. Now IFF is not a typo. IFF is actually uh, uh, very specific. IFF means if and only if. So if is not enough. Like that. That's that's not exact enough. If and only if. They're like very specific. Like only if this is true, right? So only if the next statement is true, we have we can make this statement. So we can't say this unless this next part is true, okay? Now, what does this next part mean? So this says that I have to have two constants, C and N naught, okay? So these are constants. Now, what's a constant? It's a number, it's a fixed number. And it doesn't even tell you which number it's fixed at. It just has to be a number that you can find 
and you can't change the number once you find it. Like it's, it's a constant, it doesn't change as n grows, okay? That's really what it is. So as n gets bigger and bigger and bigger, c and n naught does not change. If you can find two numbers where this statement will be true, then the rest applies. Now, this statement, the first part of this, okay, t at n less than or equal to c times f at n, okay? Now, this part basically means that t at n doesn't have to be less than or equal to f at n, but it has to be some constant times f at n, okay? It has to be less than or equal to some constant times f at n uh, for the statement to be true. And the second part has to do with for every value of n greater than or equal to n naught, okay? So for, so as for any value of n that's bigger than this, the statement is true. Now I'm going to show you uh, graphically what this actually means. Okay, so let me uh, let me show you. So uh, it's easier to think about this visually. So here uh, I'm going to use an example here where I'm going to graph uh, different things. So the first graph I have here, this blue line, is actually n. Okay, this this blue line here, this is n. Okay, now. This, uh, this line is the line that we're trying to prove that everything falls under, okay? So an upper bound is like you can't go over an upper bound, right? So everything falls underneath this end line. Now, uh, let's suppose that uh, I wanted to prove that this state, I should have started with this, sorry. Uh, let's say that I wanted to show that, uh, that T at N uh, is equal to 5n plus uh, 20, okay? I'm just making this number up, okay? So this is just uh, some sort of expression that we do get by looking at our resource consumption, okay? So this is like I'm counting everything and I'm getting an expression for, for this. And I found out that this particular ex mathematical expression shows how many operations my program, my, my algorithm will do as when I run it, okay? Now, when I do this, uh, so this, this is basically a line, right? Like if you, if you uh, plot it, it's a line. Now, if I then show, if I take a look at this, now this particular line here, this is n, okay? This is the n line. Now, if I add on just 5n, this line is 5n. So if I, were tr if I try to make the statement that 5n is less than n, that statement is definitely, definitely false because you will notice that the 5n line, that's this line right here, never goes underneath the n line. It's not, so this line, this n line, definitely is not an upper bound, okay? But yet we say it is an upper bound, right? So why can we say that? Well, the reason we can say that is because big O notation allows us to actually have a bit of wiggle room when it comes to um, actual uh, comparisons. So I cannot say that, uh, while I cannot say that 5n is underneath the blue line here, the n, I can say that it is underneath this line, orange line. Now this orange line is 8n, okay? So 8n, okay, now 8 is a constant. It's a number, okay? Why 8? Uh, it's bigger than 5. Okay, I chose some number that is bigger than five that looks okay when I graph it, okay? So uh, now I could have chosen any number greater than five. 5.1 would have been just fine, fine as well. Six, seven, doesn't really matter. So eight, uh, so eight N is definitely, definitely bigger than five N, right? So this orange line is always above the five N line, okay? So I have found a constant C that is uh, equal to eight where this statement is true. Now, the thing that I was trying to show though was not five, that that it was 5n, the, the statement was t at n is equal to 5n plus 20, right? So if I were to graph that, um, what happens is you can see that this yellow line that just popped up, this line is 5n plus 20. And 5n plus 20, as you can see, is um, it's not always below the, orange line. It's not always below 8n. At the beginning, 5n plus 20 is actually above the 8n line, right? Like the 8n line is, is um, not underneath it. Oh, sorry, no, it's not above it. 
So if I were to make the statement that um, that that five n that five n plus twenty is less than or equal to eight n, that statement is actually not true. It's only true starting here. So at this point in uh, at for this value of n, which is uh, it looks like about six or seven, after about that point, this statement becomes true. And once it becomes true, it is never untrue. Okay, so this is really important is that once, um, once I get past this point, 5n plus 20 is below 8n. So that's where the n naught part comes in. So what I'm trying to say is that I don't have to prove that my expression is underneath n. It's underneath some constant times n that uh, and it doesn't have to be true from the beginning of time. It doesn't have to be true for every value of n. It only has to become true at some point and never again become untrue. So this is the, the this is basically the um, this is basically what the math says that that expression says. Okay. What I need to do is I need to show that this is true. Now in practice, we actually never actually go around proving this formally. Uh, we we use this notation uh, to really just uh, express uh, the upper bound of our uh, algorithm. OK, so we don't necessarily like we don't go around like finding C and N naught. There, there's actually a simpler way of doing it. And we'll talk about that when we actually do a form uh, an analysis. And there's some steps that you can do to do it. Uh, so in practice, we don't actually prove try to prove this. Uh, uh, and we'll talk about how to actually get, uh, how to actually do the analysis in a moment, okay? Uh, and I think that's it for this video. Uh, thank you.